Welcome back, folks. Now it's starting to get real because we're going to be laying down all the guitar tracks for this song. Uh, the rhythm parts for this track are relatively simple, actually, but we're going to be quad tracking them, so it's important to be tight and clear, and so it'll take some time to record these. I wrestled for a while the best way to record this video, and, you know, considering that it took me about an hour to record all the guitar parts, I figured it'd be way better to just montage me recording the actual parts. And then at the end of the video, I've, I've gone ahead and played out all the riffs together so you can hear how they sound and where we're at. Now for the actual song, I'm still deciding which way I want to go. I've narrowed it down to two choices. Uh, the first choice, I could use the Kazrog Thermionic Duality 3, which is an emulation of a three-channel rectifier, which sounds really great. I would use the corresponding Recabinet 5 oversized impulses with it, so it would basically be like, you know, a Mesa chain uh, or i could go with mercurial spark which i really like uh this thing sounds so good especially with these type palm units that i'm doing but when we get to the mixing stage i'll probably demo both of them and you know figure it out then which one i like best or which one sounds better however for tracking guitars i don't like to mess around with a bunch of plugins so i typically just use spark or a one plugin guitar chain uh, with Spark, I turn off all the oversampling and all the nifty extra tools because I don't care about them. I'm only using it to track just so I have something to listen to when I play back to see what it sounds like. So I wanted to give some actual recording tips while you're watching me track in the background. Uh, first and foremost, create a new session like I have here with just the drums or something like that. It'll keep the load on your CPU very light so you don't have to worry about dropouts or running out of you know RAM or processing power. Next, uh, turn your guitar away from your computer and your monitors when you're recording. If you don't turn your guitar away, you're going to pick up a ton of metallic noise from the computer and the monitors, and there's just going to be a lot of noise and interference. Number three, obviously, uh, always play with a metronome. That should you know, always, okay? Uh, the next one, you know, play long sequences of riffs if you can. It helps make songs feel more natural with flow. In the case of my song, most of these are just power chords and some and some palm muting, so I don't have to break up the riffs as intricately as I would if I was doing some technical death metal stuff. But on top of that, you know, don't copy and paste whole riffs over and over one after another. To the untrained ear, you'll get away with it, but somebody like me or you know someone even better than me, we're going to be able to hear up. Oh, yeah, you you copy and pasted it. And nice, good job. You played it once and copied and pasted it four times. You're lazy. Don't do that. Just play the riff as many times as you need to over and over, okay? Next is concentrate on playing cleanly with a good pick or good pick attack and good pick definition. You know, for a lot of metal and black metal, I've always used the Jazz 3. You know, but sometimes you might have too much pick definition. So have an assortment of picks to go around, see which one works best for you. But you really want to pick cleanly and carefully and with balls. You don't want to play lightly. You really want to strum those chords. Finally, you want to just take your time. Play as tight as possible. You know, don't rely on slip editing your guitars later on. That sucks, and you're always going to introduce artifacts. I mean, if you played an entire riff, for example, really well, but you screwed up the, the last note, well, punch in a few measures early of that last note, play the riff, you know, overlap, and then play the last note, and then you can splice those two together with a very short fade. But that's going to be way better than actually moving the wave file with slip editing because you're not going to introduce any unnecessary, you know, artifact or anything, anything like that. It'll sound infinitely more natural. On top of that, you're not going to waste your time playing an entire part all over again because you missed one note at the end of the riff. Now, if you miss a note like in the beginning or the middle of the riff, you probably should just retract the whole thing. It's up to you to decide the best way to go about it, really. So I'm going to go ahead and be quiet now. We're going to listen to all the guitars, everything I've tracked right now, and see where we're starting from. No EQ, no processing, just checking it out. Thank you. 
All right, so we have a really good start. The guitars are really tight. They sound quite good. And basically that covers it for rhythm guitars. All right, so coming up next, we are going to have a video about lead guitars, and I'm not looking forward to it because I'm not a very good lead guitarist. If you think this is a cool series and it's helpful for you, consider a like rating and subscribing. Go ahead and hit that bell symbol too to get email notifications when the next video comes out. Thanks a lot, guys. Have a good one.